Hi, I'm Emily Claire Hughes. I'm a former musical theater singer, actor, dancer who lived and studied in New York City for over eight years. Before studying musical theater, I trained in classical voice and chamber singing in an arts high school, and I also trained privately. I left New York after those eight years and eventually decided to live abroad. So I spent about a year in Portugal and ultimately decided to settle in Hamburg, Germany, which is where I am now. Now, in between that time period, I also lived and worked on a cruise ship for two years, which was a bit of an adventure. Um, I have sung everything from Queen music to Sondheim to Russian choral hymns to your standard musical theater songs in German. Now, I actually have an entirely different job and I work in communications and talent management. I absolutely love my job, but it's nothing like what I thought I would be doing a couple years ago. So how did this all come to be? Well, I started my blog, lulolo.com, about two years ago when I was really struggling to find my footing abroad. Lulolo is now my full-time passion project and also a part-time career, and it's this blog that led me to the job that I have today. So I wanna give you a small glimpse into what we're gonna talk about today. The first thing that we're gonna dive into is that you need to get a hobby. No, I'm serious, you actually really need to get a hobby. <laughs> Whether it be backstage crochet, or blogging your way around the world, or ice skating in your free time, it's really important that you express yourself with something, anything that is not your profession. And we're gonna talk about why this matters, okay? And how it, by having a hobby, you're actually going to boost your mental health, you're gonna boost your self-confidence, and ultimately, these are all things that are going to make you better at your job. The second thing that we're gonna dive into are what I'm deeming COVID qualifications. And I don't mean this in a way to poke fun at what's happening in this very serious situation in the world right now. But we're gonna talk about how things change. Your professional life might change, your personal life might change, and the circumstances of the world around you might change. And when that situation happens and you find yourself in those circumstances, I want you to know exactly what you're qualified to do. And I think some of these qualifications might surprise you. By training as an artist and a musician, you have some very inherent career qualifications that are going to make you much more suited to certain jobs than other people. You have qualifications that a lot of people wish they had, and we're gonna talk about what they are, why they matter, and how you can use them to land your next gig. Ultimately, we're also going to dive into what your guiding principle should be for any sort of career explanation, and I'll just give you a hint that it's a pretty good thing. So let's get into it. First of all, you're here. Give yourself some credit for taking the time and putting in the effort to find community, to improve yourself, and to seek out a place that's going to inspire you. Those steps that you've taken are absolutely awesome. I also wanna take a moment though and say that everything that I'm about to tell you might not resonate with you, and the advice that I'm giving might not be suitable to every aspect of your life, and that's okay. I'm going to do the best I can and provide you with enough dynamic information that you should walk away with something or thinking about things that you hadn't thought about before. So to start with a bit of foundational understanding, let's talk about some of the everyday aspects of life as a musician, artist, performer, person who bangs on wood, whatever you want to call it, that don't necessarily exist for other people. The first thing that we're going to talk about is rejection. I know but I wanna know how you're handling it, how you're actually handling it. Because honestly, you're probably handling it better than most people. If you think about it, every single day as a performer is filled with some sort of rejection. Whether this be an audition that didn't go in your favor or a lackluster review for a concert that you were a part of, or perhaps even some small rejection in your family for those closest around you not understanding your career choices. What's the plus side of all of this? Well, you probably handle rejection better than the average person. But the one thing that you really can't do is reject yourself. And without sounding a, a bit cliche here, I'm, I'm very serious in the sense that no one else is gonna build you up from these small rejections. I mean, okay, except like maybe me. Hi, I think you're wonderful. Um, but you really can't let these rejections destroy you. What you can do is take the energy from this and channel it into some productive little victories in the form of hobbies. The second not so nice aspect of everyday life as a musician is stress. 
Holy moly, the amount of stress that you experience when you get sent music a few hours before an audition, when you're told 30 minutes before that you have to go on for someone who's sick in an orchestra. Not to mention the everyday fact of working under pressure is a routine, terrifying part of being an artist. And while of course you keep calm and carry on in this situation because it's your job, Afterwards, you're really dealing with some emotional turmoil when the curtain goes down, you say bye to your friends at the bar, and you go home and change into your sweatpants. If something went poorly, you're most likely unnecessarily hard on yourself. And if something went well, you're probably experiencing a feeling of joy unlike anything else in the world. Because that's what our life is. It's this roller coaster of ups and downs. And the success that we experience is kind of unlike anything else in the world. I mean, you can be very good at your job in the business world, but when you do a presentation, nobody stands up and demands an encore. That's one of those amazing, joyful feelings of being a musician that other people don't get to experience. But the counterpart to that is is the really unfortunate lows that we have. So how, in this world of tumultuous ups and downs, do you find balance? And balance is a word I want you to take away from this today, because it's very important to try and find the balance in all of this. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing you can do is get a hobby. Now, I know that people sometimes say, oh, get a hobby, as this off-the-cuff flippant remark. But I'm very serious about this in the sense that I want you to find a hobby that it's not something you do when you have time, but it's something that you make time for. It's these hobbies that are going to help you find balance and most of all perspective, another key word here. Perspective is this million dollar word as far as I'm concerned in life. And so in this world of sudden stress and rejection and ups and downs, unequivocal joy and really low lows, it's hobbies and having another outlet that you make time for that's going to help you find this perspective and balance. So I want you to establish something that is not just a when I have time for it hobby, but a hobby that you make time for. Now what are a few examples of this? Ice skating. I have a friend who is a devoted ice skater, and I don't mean she just goes to a rink and twirls around. No, she is on a team of people. They meet routinely, they meet regularly, they go on trips, and they ice skate. And this is a skill that she is developing over time, working with people to go out and explore the world and, and really connect over something that is not music. Another example? gardening. Now I'm not talking about just like having a few small herbs on your windowsill. Personally, I can't really keep much alive, so don't come to me with your gardening questions. But if you are a patient, level-headed person, Try making your outdoor space into something really extraordinary from scratch. Join a gardening club. Connect with gardening people on Facebook. Use Instagram and you know targeted hashtags to find people around you who are doing the same thing. Another perk of something like gardening is that it's going to allow you to see visible little victories, which is something that's very important in this world of hobbies because as a musician, sometimes you don't see the results quickly enough, right? And it's quite easy to, to lose faith in this situation. But by having something where you get these little, these little victories, that's going to boost your self-confidence as well. The third hobby that I think is actually quite important is writing. And we're going to get into this one a bit later because this is something that's quite personal to me. So I'll take you into my journey and my process as a writer as well. So why do these things matter? Why should you be putting your energy into becoming the next Michelle Kwan instead of practicing for the 15th time? Well. I think it's very important to meet people who aren't in your musical bubble. Another thing I think is important here is to talk about the complete focus on something that's not your profession. And so by doing this, you're going to create a more well-rounded skill set and a better understanding of the world. You're also going to build more confidence with some of these small successes. And lastly, these are all things that are going to eventually make you better at your job and basically a better human. How? Okay, let's take an example. So let's say you have a really awful audition, right? We've all had those. Those auditions where you walk out thinking that like you've blown it, your career's over. We know it's not true, but in the moment, that's really what it feels like. You know, you feel like you've lost out on a big opportunity. To make this a bit more relatable, let me share my own experience with you. So when I was 21 years old, just I think just newly turned 21, I was in the final, 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 final callbacks for the national tour of Sister Act the Musical and the role of Sister Mary Robert. 
I was absolutely perfect for this role, and it was a dream to be in this callback process before even graduating university. I thought this was going to be my big break. This was going to be the thing that led me to a better agent. This was going to be my ticket into the Actors' Equity Union. It was amazing. And then I didn't get it. I made it all the way to the final round, and I just didn't get it. It doesn't make me a worse performer, but it felt like it. It felt like the door had closed on that really big opportunity. And it took me a long time to get over it, I won't lie. So let's take my personal example, and perhaps an example from your own life, and talk about why it matters to have people who aren't in your musical bubble in these situations. So say you've had one of those awful career-ending auditions and you think you're done. And then you go out to meet a friend who works in marketing, for instance, and you're talking to your friend in marketing about how you're feeling, right? How you know you feel like you've blown it. You feel like rejected. You feel stressed. You feel unsure. All of these things based on this one, perhaps 15 minute experience, right? Well, your friend in marketing lives in a completely different world. And she knows that when she has a bad marketing campaign, the world doesn't end. Her boss doesn't call the entire business world and say, hey, this girl's career is over, never hire her again. That's just not how it works. By talking to somebody else who lives in a different world and has career experiences and a different perspective because of that, you're going to be reminded of the balance and perspective that are so important to think about in these situations. It won't necessarily change the course of events in that moment. You still didn't get the job, right? The audition maybe still didn't go in your favor. That's okay, but it's these moments that are going to make you aware of the fact that there's more to come, right? There's optimism to be had in these situations. And by talking to somebody who has a different perspective, you're just gonna be reminded of the things that you might have known deep down in there, but they're finally gonna come back to the surface. Now. One thing I do want to clarify here is I'm not telling you to not have friends in your own world, right? In your own musical bubble. It's amazing to kind of geek out with somebody over a symphony or just want to listen to the score of your favorite movie. I totally get it. But I think it's important to cast a wide net so you have other perspectives existing and other people to bounce ideas off of who have that different perspective and will help you then examine your own perspective and find your own balance. So just cast a wide net. So now I wanna move on to this idea of focusing your creative energy on something that's different than your career. Personally, this was a really big game changer for me. When I lived in New York, my creative energy was completely 100% all the time focused on musical theater. And in turn, my life was an absolute roller coaster of emotions. Like I was a mess <laughs> in the sense that if I had a great audition, I had an amazing day. If I had a bad audition, like we were just talking about, I really felt like it was over. You know, what, what was the point of this all? What was I doing there? Oh, this was so difficult. I was never gonna break into the actor's union, things like that, which I eventually did, mind you. I spent all of my free time taking dance classes or working at my restaurant job in between gigs or taking classes to become a better actor. My life was all about musical theater all the time. And it was so stressful. I mean, fast forward to one year and some change later when I was living in Portugal and I had this few months break in between my two singing contracts on the cruise ship and I was really struggling. I didn't know what to do with myself in the sense that I had no performing opportunities in Portugal. I also wasn't really legally allowed to work there because of my visa situation and I was lost. The only thing that had given me purpose when I had been in New York for the previous, you know, eight years of my life was gone. It felt like the rug had just been completely swept out from underneath my feet. So I decided to pursue something that I had been interested in for a little while, but I had never put the time, effort, or energy into exploring it. And for me, that was writing. So I started a blog. And when I say I started a blog, I mean like from the ground up, including buttons, fonts, layout, photos, posts, comment forums, like I, poured my heart and soul into a piece of the internet that I wanted to be my space for sharing my creativity and you know swapping stories and inspiring people to make positive changes in their life. And that's how my blog, lulobo.com, was born. 
And within a few weeks of my blog launching, I found that I was getting messages from people who wanted to share their own experience, that they were inspired to communicate based on something that I had written. I started connecting with other bloggers who had similar experiences, but existed in a completely different world than my own. And the thing that really brought us together here was the idea of change. I want to take a moment to say that change is something that is a really big theme on my blog, Lulolo. I talk a lot about change and why it's scary as a human being and what a really responsible, somewhat safe person like myself had to overcome within myself and within my surroundings to really go for the changes I wanted to go for in life and go after the happiness that I thought I deserved. And it's this community and this experience I had with my blog only being a few weeks old that I took with me when I returned to singing. I kept my blog going and suddenly I found that my perspective had completely changed. I found that experiences that were previously career enders, if you will, like my bad sister act audition, or for instance, singing on the cruise ship and cracking on a high note with an audience of over 1,200 people clinging on to your every word, it suddenly wasn't so awful. It didn't make everything great, of course. I mean, cracking on a high note or you know, missing a cue or something like that is always embarrassing, and I'm not here to tell you that it's not. I mean, part of wh why we feel that way is because we have that responsibility and dedication to our job, right? And I'm not here to undermine that. But suddenly these moments that would have previously seemed like career enders weren't that bad because I could write about it and I could share it in a space. And by writing about it, I found that I always started to see the lessons in these situations. So instead of just dwelling on the moment and thinking about what I could have done to be better, I started to see what I can learn from it to be better in the future. So without sounding dramatic here, I do wanna say that having this blog was seriously transformational for my thinking and for my career. So let's dive into a quick sidebar, my process as a writer, because maybe this will help you. And it doesn't have to be a blog. It, it could be a book, it could be a poem, it could be a journal. I seriously believe that writing can be so transformational for taking these experiences and seeing the bigger picture in all of them. So if you're looking at diving into writing, let me share my process with you. I always say that if you don't wanna talk about something, there's probably a really good chance that you should write about it. Why? Well, cause that's when I think you find that balance and perspective. I know you're probably really sick of hearing me say balance and perspective right now, but I promise you, if you take them with you in a couple of weeks, when you think of balance and perspective, they might actually help you. So anyways, how do we find that with writing? Well, first of all, I typically start with some stream of conscious. I put aside time in my schedule every week, for me, it's Sunday morning with a cup of coffee, to write. It doesn't matter if I feel in the mood, it doesn't matter if I feel inspired, I just start writing. What am I feeling? What was I thinking about this week? What's an experience where I felt like, oh man, like, I feel like I didn't re react well to that. I feel like I didn't respond well to that. That really cut me to my core. Or maybe I saw something happen to somebody else and I didn't know how to react. I start writing about it, okay? Total stream of conscious, put it all out there. And then once that's done, that's step one, I start to go back and edit and refine. And then I let it sit for a little while because I really think you can't do a brilliant piece of writing in one take. At least I can't, maybe I'm not talented enough, but hey, who knows. So I give it some time, I let it sit, I let it breathe, and I go and do something else, okay? And then eventually, either a couple hours later, a couple days later, I come back and I edit and refine again, and I look at the bigger lesson that perhaps I missed the first time. Maybe I found it the first time, but in case I didn't, I wanna give it time, and I wanna think about what else could be there, okay? So then in this case, I would go in, look at what I've written, and highlight those elements of the post that lead to this balance or perspective hiding within those words. And after I find those things, and I think that there is enough of a shape in what I've written, and there is something positive to share with the world, then I would publish it. Something I do wanna mention here as well is that this is my personal process because on my blog, I am very aware of the fact that I don't enjoy reading pieces where other people feel sorry for themselves. And I don't think it's that particularly compelling for me to share the fact that I've cracked on a high note and I feel like my life is over. 
because honestly, it's probably not. But I think what is more compelling is to share my own experiences that are probably quite similar to somebody else's and to share what I've learned from that because not everybody has a blog and not everybody's going to write about these things. But if I can inspire somebody to take a step back from the situation and see the bigger picture, then my blog has totally done its job for not only me, but for somebody else as well. So what happens when you approach your job with more confidence and perspective from these hobbies and from meeting people outside of your bubble? Well, you're better at it. It's honestly just as simple as that. You take more risks knowing that if you fail, that life goes on and there's something else to live for outside of just your career and being on stage. You find levels of your performance and yourself that you probably would have never experienced before. Being 100% honest with you, having a blog completely changed my life as a performer on and off stage. Find your hobby, find your blog, find your garden, find your classic car crew, whatever it is, find your hobby. So before you leave me to go off and join a bunch of random Facebook groups for your new hobby, let's dive into part two of what we're gonna talk about. Now I'm calling this overqualified and inexperienced. I wanna talk about broadening your horizons and the art of a creative resume boost, if you will. First of all, let's talk about your qualifications. There are specific points that you should be highlighting on your CV or resume and owning with confidence when you're looking to explore something else beyond just being on stage. First of all, remember that stress we talked about? Well, that means that you actually work well under pressure better than most people. This is a huge advantage to future employers or to people looking at hiring you for a new position. They know that you're used to high stress situations and you won't crack under pressure. The second thing that would be a shame to miss is your creativity. Think about your job. You help people feel things with the way you interpret a piece of music. Now, whether or not you're aware of it, that requires a very intense level of creativity. And something to point out here that I've actually been told by multiple people in the business world as well, is that creativity is not something that can be taught. So this is something that you should be owning and going out into the world with, with confidence. One of the earliest lessons I learned as a performer was about commitment and punctuality. I think at my first theater camp, I was taught that if you're not 15 minutes early, you are late. And there has never been a theater company or cruise line or production company I've worked with where this rule has not been true. And I kind of like it in the sense that this has created this intense level of punctuality and a heightened level of responsibility within myself and probably within you as well. Now, if you're perpetually late, please don't put this on your CV because it's not true. But if you are a person who's always early, who's always very punctual, who always does take responsibility for things, you should be highlighting that as well. Quite possibly, the most important thing that you possess as a musician is this level and understanding of teamwork that a lot of other people will never understand. The harmony and synchronization that you have to utilize and be in tune with when you're playing a piece is what most businesses wish they had with their employees. You get it, you understand how to not be a leader, how to know when you are needed to lead, how to blend in with others around you, how to not stick out, how to be a cog in a very important wheel. You kind of understand the finesse that is required to really navigate the field of teamwork. And that is something that you should definitely be owning with pride. Now, something you maybe haven't thought of is marketing. I get it, maybe you didn't study marketing, that's okay, neither did I. But have you ever produced your own concert? Have you ever convinced people to come see you in something by saying, hey, if you wanna to come to my performance, we can do X, Y, and Z afterwards, or come to my performance, I'll get you a comp and take you out for a drink afterwards, and we can chat about the performance, or any number of things to promote the work you're doing and to increase the audience size. Believe it or not, you've kind of partaken in a form of marketing, and you probably understand what works and what doesn't when you're trying to get audiences to come to your show. This is something to highlight in the sense that you have at a very grassroots level an understanding of marketing and you've essentially run your own marketing campaign. So be sure to put that on there if you are a person who has produced your own work. So why are we talking about this? Why am I here telling you ways to beef up your CV or resume when you're here to be a musician? Well, that's a really good question. 
Because there might come a time when things change. There might come a time when a pandemic strikes. There might come a time when your happiness changes. And something I'd like to point out now is the fact that in my opinion, your guiding principle for everything you are doing should always be your happiness. Now I'm not talking about good days versus bad days. I'm talking about the thing that makes you excited to get out of bed every morning. If you were to have talked to me about 10 years ago, at the moment, I should probably be on Broadway, originating a lead role, and soon I should be up for a Tony Award. And none of those things are happening. But that's okay, because I chose to take a different path because I was unhappy on the path that was gonna lead me to those things. So I tried something new. And it's really important to know that when you're going out there to try something new, that you can approach that new adventure or that new obstacle with confidence and with these inherent qualifications and with that balance and perspective that you've gotten from what we've talked about thus far. So what are some things you can look into when maybe your situation changes, your happiness changes, or the world changes? First of all, let's talk about teaching. Now this is a pretty basic suggestion, and I'm sure this isn't gonna blow your mind, but. Never forget that it's there. Are you good at working with other people? Do you have that you know, inherent ability to lead people but also understand the teamwork element? Then there might be some people who could really use your expertise. And teaching is something that could be a really good option for you while you're on your way to exploring something else. The second thing we should talk about is fundraising. You and I know better than most people that the arts don't exist without funds. You can communicate the importance of that art and that music better than most people because you're one of the people who creates it. If you're ever working with a symphony that's also hiring in fundraising positions and you're looking to take a break from performing for a while, this could be a really awesome option for you to look into. Are you highly organized? Why not become an assistant to a respected musician or start with a creative marketing team using your own experience of putting together your show to break in? Now, I'm not encouraging you in any of these suggestions to ditch the stage, and I just wanna say that again because I think it's really important. But let's acknowledge that things happen, and sometimes you wind up in Portugal with nothing else to do. Okay, maybe that's just me, but the world changes, and you should be able to adapt and know that you should never feel chained to the stage. You should be there because you want to be there. And if that situation ever changes, I hope that these are some things that will help you navigate that new territory. And honestly, regardless of whether or not you're searching for a new job, just don't forget these qualifications listed above because they should give you a little boost of confidence. I'm sorry, maybe it's just a little bit of an ego boost, but you're really qualified. You have skills that other people in the world wish they did. And so whenever you're having those days where and you're having those auditions that feel like career enders, please just think about these things again and find those qualities within yourself that really set you apart. And now it's time for me to wrap this up. Over the past 30 minutes or so, we've touched upon two major points that are, in essence, a testament to you. You have immense capabilities and a highly specified skill set that millions of people all over the world wish they had. So what will you do with it? You don't owe anything to the world, but you do owe it to yourself to stay committed to keeping that balance and perspective in your life that will keep you rooted in humanity. Now that quest for balance and perspective might lead you to become the most confident performer you've ever been on stage. That journey to find balance and perspective, it might also lead you to the front of a classroom, in front of young, hopeful musicians who need your direction. That journey might also take you to halfway across the world and land you in a German city that you've never even heard of before. Wherever you land, I hope that you stay inspired. I hope that you stay creative. And most of all, I hope that you stay happy. Because in the end of all of this, the only review that matters for this concert is your own.